According to the World Health Organization, nearly 7, mi 7 million people across the globe have died due to COVID-19 since 2020. Just a massive loss of humanity. Now, as this nation changes its approach to the deadly contagion, our chief medical correspondent, Dr. John LaPook, and medical contributor, Dr. Celine Gounder, take a closer look at what's ahead for patients in the coming months. On Thursday, May 11th, the Biden administration plans to declare an end to the nation's public health emergency for COVID. But what exactly does that mean for you? and the services you've likely been taking advantage of since the pandemic began. Dr. LaPook and I can answer some of these questions for you. We'll explain how COVID vaccination, testing, and treatment might change, and how your access to them might be different. We're now moving to a phase in the pandemic where not everyone will need vaccine boosters, but people who are 65 and older, those who are immunocompromised, or who live in group settings like nursing homes may need to get boosted at least once or twice a year. For now, vaccines will remain free for everyone. And the good news is after government purchase vaccines run out, they will still be free for most people with insurance. Uninsured people will be able to get free or low cost vaccinations through local health departments, community health centers or drug stores. It's important to remember if you have a cough, sore throat, maybe just the sniffles or you just don't feel well. It's still a great idea to get tested for COVID. If you test positive, you can take steps to reduce the spread, and you also have the option of getting treatment. We may also have at-home combo tests for COVID and the flu before too long. But the biggest change for most people will be the higher cost for at-home COVID tests and PCR tests. You have until May 11th to get at-home tests covered by your insurance company or Medicare or to order them from COVID.gov. So stock up right now. You only have a few more days. If you're uninsured or on Medicaid, you'll still get free tests for use at home through local community health centers. We should also look at Paxlovid, the antiviral pill used to treat COVID. Paxlovid has been shown to reduce the risk of hospitalization and death even among vaccinated people, even if you're vaccinated. And it also seems to reduce the risk of developing long COVID. Similar to at-home tests, Paxlovid will still be free as long as government purchase supplies last. After that, people on private insurance and Medicare may have some out-of-pocket costs, but Paxlovid will remain free for people on Medicaid and uninsured people will still be able to get the drug through community health centers and drug stores. So, you know, there are a lot of changes right here. One of the things I took at, away from this was that people who are on Medicare right now, they get those home tests for free and that's not gonna be happening anymore. So you have a couple more days to go ahead and do that. They still can get tested uh, for free, you know, when their doctors or healthcare providers order that. But um, what are you taking away from us? A lot of stuff. What, what's the take home for you? And what are you telling your patients? I think on some level, we're moving to business as usual in the U.S., how we normally access healthcare, which means that you may have out-of-pocket costs for your tests, for your treatment. Uh, I think the main thing that will remain free really is vaccination. Um, and Given that we just have a couple more days until this May 11th deadline, you do have those couple days to try to stock up on some tests while they do remain free. You know, some of my patients are saying, well, is the pandemic over? Do we have to just, can we just forget about it now? You know, obviously. I wish, I wish. Yeah. But pandemic is not over. The crisis phase of the pandemic is over uh, or is ending. But we are going to be living with COVID for the rest of our lives. And so we need to be trying to make use of the tools we have. I think, unfortunately, not everyone is going to have the same access to tests and treatments and so yeah. on um, that all of us do. Yeah, there's a, a hit, as, as often happens, to the social safety net for people who are uninsured or underinsured. Uh, but meanwhile, I think for me, a big take home is going to be, uh, what are you doing for the next two to three weeks? Because if there's something in your life where you really don't want to get covid uh, nobody wants to get COVID, but you really can't afford to get COVID. You may want to take some extra steps. Or if you're going to be like, if I'm going to see my 100-year-old father-in-law in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be especially careful right now. Yes, yeah, so you may still want to test before you go visit somebody in the nursing home. Uh, I'm still wearing a mask when I fly, mm -hmm. uh, when I take public transportation. It's just not worth it to have to miss work or, God forbid, that, that amazing vacation that you have planned. So yeah. I love talking with you always, and it's especially great to talk Doc? To Doc.